Hello friends, Jennifer here with Moreau Family Farm. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. As soon as I open up my door to come outside, mm. these babies just think they're always gonna get fed. I was sitting in the sunroom and I got a little curious. I heard this noise and it kind of sounded like a moo, but then it wasn't really like a moo, but it definitely sounded like it came from one of the cows. This morning I saw Daisy just really loving up on Zeke. I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to explain to you guys our goals and our purpose for Zeke on the farm. What's he doing picking up the feed bowl? Yeah, this is what was going on this morning over by the hay. Daisy is a mid-sized jersey. She is just about 43 inches. Zeke, he is a mini zebu. He is 36 inches tall. So he is very, very small. There's a difference between a zebu and a mini zebu. The standard size zebus originate from China and they are a much bigger breed of cow. This is a mini zebu. So his genetical backgrounds originate from India. The mini zebu is a very common standard practice for them to use as their meat cows. Um, they've also been known to be really good for their milk as well. So originally we got this zebu here because we had Duchess. And if you guys remember or not, I'll post a picture of her here, but we had a mini Jersey named Duchess and two different times we got her AI'd and nothing took. So we thought maybe if we purchased a, a bull that would be easy to work with, um, that it wouldn't be impossible for us to get her bred. Before we purchased him, we did some research on zebus, and we pretty much came to the conclusion that they're a small size breed of bull that would be easy for us to handle. Um, he is very calm and very docile. He is pretty cool. He doesn't give anybody any problems. He has never had any issues with the, the goats or anything like that. He is probably about... Um, I'm going to say about 19 months if I had to guess. Um, I can't remember exactly what month he was born, but he was just over a year old when we got him and we've had him for a few months now. So we don't have Duchess on our farm anymore. We were trying to d debate what we were going to do with him. And we figured that we would keep him long enough to find out if Daisy is bred or not. Um... We had Daisy AI'd back in July. So we're still trying to figure out whether or not she is pregnant. We AI'd her to a mini Jersey bull who was absolutely just gorgeous. So I am really hoping that she is pregnant, but as of right now, it's still kind of hard to tell. My husband said that he wants to, um, he likes playing doctor. <laughs> uh, if you guys watched any of our videos, I'll say that a couple times because we're, we're fairly a, a newer YouTube channel with not a ton of subscribers. Um, but if you go back and watch some of our videos, you'll realize very quickly that my husband is the prankster. He's the, I like to get dirty kind of guy and we'll just jump into anything. Um, we went full force into neutering piglets uh, without knowing what we were doing other than watching other YouTube videos, disbudding our goats without really know, knowing what we were doing, just again, knowing from other YouTube videos. Um, and if you wanna see videos like that, we have posted videos and my husband does an amazing job. I swear he probably should have been a veterinarian cause he's very good at it. Um, he wants to go in Daisy just manually to see if he can feel anything to see if she's pregnant. And I'm not opposed to him doing that just because I think she's at the point now where the baby would be big enough for him to be able to palpate. 
um, at the end of this month, which is October. So at the end of October of 2022, just for recording purposes, she should be about three months pregnant. So I told him that at the end of this month would be a good time for us to figure it out. But then, of course, watching it, the way that she has been with Zeke, I don't know if she's pregnant or not. Now, she's always a very, very lovey-dovey cow. Um, she's very affectionate with other cows. So I don't know if she is just being affectionate because cows will lick other cows just to show that they like them and stuff like that. Um, so she could just be showing him that she likes him. I have not seen her try to mount him. Um, and I definitely have not seen him try to mount her. We had, we had Zeke before we had Daisy. So when we first got Daisy, within like the first couple of weeks, I did see him try to mount her. And I have not seen him do that since. Hey guys, as I was editing this video, I had an aha moment that it's a really good possibility that Zeke could have been the one that got Daisy pregnant. We got him in May and Abby was born in May. And if we saw him mounting Daisy just a couple of weeks after we got him, it's possible that Daisy went back into heat and he could be the father if she's pregnant. So we won't know until about, I think it's March or May, but we'll find out soon enough. And hopefully I'm praying it's from the, the AI because we really want that baby on board with us. So either he's doing it at night when nobody's paying attention or um, she's pregnant and it just has not gone into heat, which would be phenomenal. Now, either way, um, we went to a fall festival like last weekend, I think it was, and we saw a mini zebu calf and it was the cutest little thing I've probably ever seen in my life. Once we move, we'll definitely be looking into getting a mini zebu cow or a heifer, either one, it doesn't matter, um, for him, but also to breed him, possibly with Daisy. Daisy does not give a lot of milk at all. She is a very, very thin cow. And if you guys go back and look at our feeding regimen and what we're feeding and how much, this girl gets at least 10 pounds of grain a day. And that is just in grain. And of course she has free access to hay. And right now we are very low on grass because it's the beginning of fall. Um, but she gets plenty of food. We also give her, besides the grain, she gets alfalfa pellets. Um, so she gets a good amount of food. You gonna come say hi? Come here, Daisy. She's not the type of cow that will just come up to you unless she thinks for sure that you have food for her. She's a sweet girl though. Um, but like I was saying, so she's not producing a ton of milk. Um, ever since she had Abby, she has not had a big udder at all. Um, Abby is her first calf though, supposedly. That's what we were told. So it's possible that next year she'll have more milk, but I don't know if my husband wants to continue with her just because we're not seeing excellent results. We get about a quart to a half a gallon from her. So... There's definitely something going on. I don't really feel like it's us. We get plenty of milk from our goats and stuff. So I don't feel like that is the issue. I think it's just our learning curve and figuring out, you guys see all these leaves falling? <laughs> How to choose a good cow um, that stands out from the rest and not just going after an animal that seems to be friendly or, or whatnot. So, we will definitely be more patient and really, you know, taking our time and spending a little extra money for a really good cow. And that's the thing, cows nowadays are getting very expensive. Now she's gonna come over and say hi. Um, 
especially highland cows, but my husband did promise me that when we move, I can get some more highlands. So that is something to look forward to in our future videos as well as hopefully some more highlands um, on, on our new farm to come. Um, but also we really are looking forward to raising Abby and if her mom, hopefully we can get her pregnant. If she's pregnant now, which would be a blessing for all of us, then she'll stick around. But if not, I have a feeling my husband's gonna want to um, just kind of send her off on her way. Somebody else who has a bull on their property. So as you guys can see, there's still some grass that's back here. She's so funny. Who's that? Who's that? Aww. Even Timmy came by to say hello, which was nice. He's out again. I don't think that guy's ever gonna go back into his pen. Well, hello, Miss Bella. Hi, Bella, baby. As farm owners, um, even if we do have a small farm, our end goal is to be self-sufficient. What we really want is we want a piece of property that has running water on it, whether it be from a pond, a, a stream, a creek, or something. It has to have some sort of water. Um, it definitely has to have less trees so we can have more forage for our animals and we want a lot more animals so we definitely need a lot more um, land that has less trees. As far as the solar energy, I'm not 100% sure if we're going to go that direction. It would be nice but it is very expensive to start off with and we would have to have the cash up front because there's no way that I will be renting anything like that or leasing or, um, you know, rent to own. I will not do that. I will not put it on credit. The other thing is we do want to start processing our own chickens, ducks. Now we do not eat pork. We are unsure whether it is a clean animal to eat or not. The Bible talks about how pork is an unclean animal in the old Testament. But in the New Testament, Jesus came to make it clean. But then there's this verse in Romans that makes it a little confusing for me. Um, so we just figure that it's better to do without. So on that note, though, we also think it's a possibility that about store-bought pork rather than farm-raised pork. Um... So we may raise pork in the future as long as it's coming from our farm. We know exactly what it's eating. We know everything that's being done to that animal rather than buying it from the store. And that kind of goes with any um, protein that you buy from the store. You just don't know what is going into those animals. And it's sad to say that there are farmers out there that give them all these hormone injections and antibiotics and all this other stuff. In my opinion, I think it's horrible that they do that um, just for money and mass production. It's kind of a sad world, but that's why we need the homesteaders, the small farmers to do what we can to supply food for our family and our neighbors and whoever might need it if things go the direction that they are looking to head to. Back to our purpose with this guy is, like I had said earlier, they are known to be primarily meat, but also for their milk. Um, the female zebus do produce a decent amount of milk. Will you? She is such a brat, you guys. <laughs> and hope. Will you please stop? So, watch this. This is what she's doing to me. She's pawing at me. Oh my gosh. All of that just to be scratched. But I love her. I love her to pieces. She's my baby. Because zebus, mini zebus, are such a small type of bull, I mean, here, I'll stand next to him to give you guys an idea 
of, well, you saw him next to Daisy, so you can see how small he is, but he's kind of the size of like a little, a large Great Dane is how to describe him. He doesn't really love to be pet. Come here. Well, he only likes to be pet from me when I have food. Other than that, he can really care less about me at all, which is fine. I don't want a super friendly bull. Um, so sometimes super friendly bulls can get over friendly, um, which is one of the reasons why we have not had a regular sized bull here. Not only do we not have enough land for them, but also um, bulls temperaments are for us because we don't really know a whole bunch about what we're doing and we're still new at this whole thing. We didn't want a normal sized bull or even a mid sized bull on our farm or even a mini bull. Um, because even like mini jerseys are very wide. They are a very, very big animal where this mini zebu, I mean, he, he is a really nice, small stature. He's not going to get big and bulky. He really, I mean, I can push him back with my hand and he'll pretty much listen. Now, if he wanted to run me over, he probably could. I'm not saying he can't. Um, my dog uh, he can run me over and push me down and get me out of the way. But he's such a very calm animal, even being in his juvenile state still. Um, he's just a really, really good, he's a good guy. So we'll keep him around. Um, but when it comes to processing, because he's a smaller animal, not him, I don't think anyways. Um, but if we wanted to process our own beef without bringing it to a butcher, we could very easily process an animal of his size rather than a standard or a mid-size bull. Um, they are so big and they would bleed out a lot that you really have to have the right kind of facility to do that. Processing an animal like this is more like processing a deer which many people process their own deers and he would definitely be um, an easier animal to process. If I had to guess, I would say he probably weighs about 300 pounds. Um, about that, maybe 350, 400 at the absolute max, but that, that's just me guessing and not being really sure. We have not weighed him before. But that is our goal for him um, or his offspring or whatever, is to have meat for our family. Smaller animals mean easier to process. And if we're gonna be self-sufficient with our beef, which we absolutely love beef on this farm. You come and say hi? Hi, Timmy. Hey, Tim Tim. Timmy, what's up, guy? So yeah, that's basically just what I wanted to hop on and talk to you about. One is just a little bit about how Daisy has been behaving lately. So I'm not 100% sure if she is pregnant um, again, but I have not seen Zeke try to mount her. So it's very possible that she is pregnant. Fingers crossed because I would love a calf from the bull that I AI'd her with. She doesn't have the best genetic offsprings but he has amazing, amazing genetics. That's it for today, guys. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions of what we can do, that would be excellent. Go ahead and put that information down in the comment section below. We love to hear from you guys. Anything that you put down below just helps our channel grow anyway. So we appreciate you just watching and following along. Thank you guys so much for being here. And until next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.